Welcome back to the Best PT Podcast. This is episode 14, talking about wheelchair evaluations and wheelchair fitting. Standard measurements for the proper fit of a wheelchair. Seat height, you should measure from the popliteal fold and then add 2 inches. Normal measurement here is 19.5 to 20.5 inches. Seat depth, measure from the posterior buttocks to the popliteal fold and then subtract 2 inches. Normal here is 16 inches. Seat width, Measure the widest aspect of the buttocks, then add 2 inches. Something great I was taught here is to have the patient or someone else hold two clipboards up against the side of the widest part of the hip and then just measure the width between the clipboards. A normal seat width measurement is 18 inches. Back height. Measure from the chair seat to the axillary floor when the shoulders are flexed to 90 degrees and then subtract 4 inches. The inferior angles of the scapula should clear the chair back. Remember, if the patient will be using a seat cushion, take this measurement with a seat cushion on the chair. Normal measurement here is 16 to 16.5 inches. And then armrest height. Measure from the chair seat to the lecranon process when the elbows are flexed to 90 degrees and add 1 inch. Again, take this measurement with a seat cushion on the chair. Normal is 9 inches from the chair seat. Different types of wheelchair frames. An ultralight frame is for a highly active patient with no need for postural support. A lightweight frame or standard frame is for a patient that is able to self-propel with their upper extremities. A hemi frame is for a patient that is able to self-propel with their lower extremities. A one-hand dry frame is for a patient that can self-propel with one upper extremity. Amputee frames The patient is able to self-propel but with a posteriorly shifted center of gravity. A power wheelchair is for a patient that cannot self-propel but can use power controls. A jerry chair is for a patient that cannot self-propel or use power controls that requires assistance for seated mobility. A reclining frame is for a patient that cannot weight shift independently or sit upright due to moderate to severe trunk involvement. And a backwards tilt and space frame is for a patient that is not able to sit upright weight shift, and also has issues with sliding and extensor tone. Wheelchair headrests, a planar or flat posterior headrest, is used with a reclining or tilt and space chair. The patient maintains a hyperextended head or neck. A curved headset, excuse me, headrest, is used to prevent backwards listing or lateral head and neck positioning. Side panels may also be indicated. Wheelchair backs. A sling back is for a patient that requires no postural support, no neuromuscular deficits, but this is typically not for long-term use. This is the sort of standard wheelchair back you would see in a hospital wheelchair. A planar back for a patient that requires mild to moderate trunk support. A curved back for a patient that requires moderate trunk support. A custom molded back for a patient that requires significant trunk support. And a removable back for a wheelchair that needs to fold. Back heights below the inferior scapula angles are for patients that can self-propel, and back heights above the inferior angle of the scapula are for spinal support, either for self-propelling manual wheelchairs or power wheelchairs. Wheelchair seats, a sling seat, is for a patient that requires no postural support, has no neuromuscular deficits, but is typically not for long-term use. A planar seat is for a patient that has no seated deformities. A curved seat is for a patient that requires mild to aggressive support curvature to increase the contact area between their lower body and the seat. A custom molded seat is for a patient that requires custom support to correct asymmetrical deformities. Again, a removable seat is for a wheelchair that must fold. And a bevel undercut seat is for a patient that self-propels with their lower extremities. A planar lateral trunk support is for mild to moderate lateral support due to listing or scoliosis. A contoured or curved trunk support is when total contact lateral support is needed. A chest strap is for the correction of anterior listing. A chest harness is for a patient that requires trunk and shoulder support for anterior listing. Wheelchair armrests. No armrests. The patient does not require trunk or upper extremity support. Removable armrests are for patients that transfer via slide board or the patient requires access to the wheels for self-propulsion. Full-length armrests are for a patient that uses a lap board, performs sit-to-stand transfers, and independent pressure relief. Tubular or single-posted armrests are for patients that require easy access to the wheels for self-propulsion and easy removal of the arms. And fixed armrests 
are for durable upper extremity support, such as the patient that performs exercises in their chair. Wheelchair wheel locks or brakes, toggle or lever brakes are standard. They require a coordinated motor ability to operate the brakes. Brake extenders are for those that require additional leverage to operate the brakes. Attendant operated brakes are when a patient cannot independently operate the brake. Wheelchair hand rims, smaller diameter rims allow higher speeds, while larger diameter rims are slower in speed but allow more power. Rim projections are for patients with grip deficits, and covered rims are when patient requires assistance for grasp. Wheelchair footrests, standard, the patient has full range of motion of the feet and ankles. Adjustable angle footrests, the patient has a minor deformity in the feet or ankles. One-piece footboards, the patient requires lateral foot support. In a custom foot box, the patient presents with a windswept posture that needs correction. Wheelchair power mobility controls, joysticks, can be adapted for other part body parts besides the hand. Proportional control joysticks, the speed changes based on the force placed on the joystick, and the joystick allows 360 degrees of motion while propelling. Non-proportional control, the speed changes at preset levels and without the ability to change directions while propelling. Sip and puff control, the direction and speed are based on the force of inhalation and exhalation. And head control, can be proportional or non-proportional. And finally, different types of seats or cushions. Bariatric wheelchairs have seats that can accommodate 300 to 1,000 pound patients. Solid cushions produce high shear forces. Liquid cushions are heavier than solid cushions but limit shear forces. And air-filled cushions require monitoring of inflation. And remember that air-filled cushions can change with altitude. That's it for episode 14, talking about wheelchair evaluation and fitting. Episode 15, we'll talk about ambulation and assistive devices. As always, the outline will be in the show notes. Thanks for joining.